Hi everyone, my name is Thomas and I am a third year astrophysics student studying in Scotland and welcome to my channel, Inversion Science, where I talk about physics, astronomy, academics and everything else science. Now this room is really warm so let's get on to the video. Our world runs on energy. Without electricity, life as we know it just doesn't exist. And as a society, we use more energy now than at any other point in history. The science has shown for decades and the recent climate strikes led by Swedish activist Greta Thunberg have shown that we cannot continue using fossil fuels to satisfy our energy needs. Our planet cannot take it any longer, no matter what certain orange presidents may say about it. Now, one solution is renewables, but they aren't particularly space efficient. But there are forms of energy that kick out a massive amount of energy and produce no carbon dioxide. Nuclear. But which nuclear? There are two. There is nuclear fusion, which is used in nuclear power stations worldwide, and then there is the ever elusive nuclear fusion, which is what powers the stars. There are arguments for both, but in the long run, I believe that fusion will be a far better source of power for human civilization. Here's why. So, Nuclear power in its current form, which is fission, is a sort of grey area power source. It produces a lot of energy and it doesn't produce carbon dioxide, but it does produce a lot of harmful radioactive waste which we have to deal with. In a nuclear fission reaction, we fire neutrons at heavy elements to cause them to break apart in fission reactions, releasing energy by converting some of their mass into energy, you know, B equals MC squared. One of the most common nuclear reactions used in energy production is uranium-235. We fire a neutron at a uranium-235 atom and it breaks apart into a barium-144 and a krypton-69. Both these atoms are of course smaller than the uranium, but they don't make up all of the mass. We also emit three neutrons and some energy. 210 mega electron volts of it. Now those three neutrons can go on to take part in other reactions, which if left unchecked can lead to a chain reaction, which is good. What is good is that 210 mega electron volts of energy that is released in a nuclear fission reaction. This energy is much greater than that released when burning fossil fuels for fuels of equal mass. So why do we still use fossil fuels? Well, there's a couple of reasons why. The first of which is just the logistics of it. Nuclear power stations take a lot longer to build than fossil fuel power stations. Much longer actually than most governmental terms. So most politicians aren't willing to take the risk of signing off on nuclear power when it could really come back to bite them in the bum if they're trying to get re-elected later. The other reason is, well... A chemical explosion then blew the roof off, sending radioactive contamination halfway round the world. And I get that. There is always the danger that if left unchecked and maintained badly, we could end up with another Chernobyl style event, which caused massive loss of life and leads to an exclusion zone around the Chernobyl reactor to this day. So what about fusion? Well, nuclear fusion is well, the opposite of nuclear fission. In nuclear fission, we break apart large elements and in nuclear fusion, we combine smaller ones. The two most popular candidates for nuclear fusion are two isotopes of hydrogen, deuterium and tritium. Deuterium is a sort of heavy hydrogen. It's a hydrogen atom with an extra neutron added on, so you've got a proton, a neutron and an electron. Tritium is sort of heavy deuterium, so you add on another neutron. Now, deuterium is relatively easy to get. It occurs naturally. Roughly one in every 6500 hydrogen atoms is a deuterium atom. So we can find it in the ocean, because hydrogen is a key ingredient in water. In fact, in every litre of ocean water, there is approximately 33 milligrams of deuterium. What that means is in a cubic kilometre of ocean water, there is enough deuterium to provide the same energy as 1.36 trillion barrels of oil. Now, the other ingredient, tritium, is harder to come by. It occurs far less commonly in nature, but it is quite readily available as a product of reacting neutrons with lithium, which is a fairly common metal. In fact, it's used everywhere in modern society. 
Looking around my room right now, I can see at least 10 objects that contain lithium in their batteries, including the camera I'm recording with, the phone in my pocket, and the phone or laptop that you're probably watching this on also contains a lithium ion battery. Lithium is used in chemistry classes just to show what happens when you throw group 1 metals into water. So, if there's enough deuterium in the oceans and enough lithium in the world to create the tritium we need, why aren't we using nuclear fusion? Well, the bottom line is we haven't really figured out how. We can make it happen, but it currently takes more energy in than you get out again, so it's still a bit off being commonplace. For argument's sake, let's say in 10 to 20 years time, we can do it efficiently. We get more energy out than we put in. Well, surely a nuclear fusion reaction must put out more energy than a nuclear fission reaction, since it's always hailed as this sort of holy grail of power generation. Well, no. A single nuclear fusion reaction fusing deuterium and tritium together only puts out about 17.6 mega electron volts of energy. This is less than 10% the energy put out by nuclear fission with uranium-235. But how does that work? We keep saying that fusion is great and it's going to take over from fission. Well, this is where we have to consider energy density. If we had one kilogram of uranium and the neutrons we need to react with it to make it split apart, then we would get somewhere in the region of 2.6 times 10 to the 24 reactions, which at 210 mega electron volts of energy apiece gets us about 5.5 times 10 to the 26 mega electron volts of energy. This energy is enough to power a 60 watt light bulb for roughly speaking, 45,000 years. But for fusion, the mass of reactants is much, much lower than it is for uranium. So in one kilogram of deuterium and tritium, we have enough material to undertake 1.2 times 10 to the 26 reactions, over 45 times more. And at 17.6 mega electron volts apiece, this gives us roughly 2.1 times 10 to the 27 mega electron volts of energy enough to power that light bulb for 175,000 years. This is so much longer than for the equivalent mass of fissionable materials, almost four times as long. The other consideration is cost, and this is where we get a little hazy and hand wavy, because you can't exactly go on Amazon and type in enriched uranium. That's a little concerning. For that reason, I can't really say with much confidence which will be cheaper but I think we can make some fairly reasonable assertions. Uranium that you mine out of the ground is not ready to go in a reactor. You have to enrich the uranium, getting it to a sort of purer stage before you can use it to produce energy. Now, mining costs a lot, and this enrichment process, given you're dealing with radioactive materials, is probably quite expensive as well. The materials for fusion, however, are probably much cheaper. We've established you can get deuterium from ocean water, and yes, you have to break it apart, but you can do that with electrolysis, so that shouldn't be too expensive to do. And lithium, well, yes, it has to be mined, but the fact they let us use it in chemistry classrooms kind of hints that it's not particularly expensive. Now, obviously this doesn't take into account the various running costs of the two power stations, but given that we have to store nuclear waste from fission reactors, that's going to take a lot of money to do. Fusion reactors only produce helium as a byproduct, and that's just an answer to our helium shortages. We really need helium. We keep losing it because it's quite light and the sun makes it fly away. Anyway. Topic for a future video. But that is why I think fusion will be the answer to our energy problems. Yes, renewables are brilliant and we need to keep investing in them, but fusion will probably power us right into the future once we get it working. Its energy density is so much higher and it doesn't have any of the harmful byproducts. In fact, its only byproduct is really useful. Now, if you enjoyed this look into why fusion is going to be so much better than fission once we get it working, then please hit a like on this video, it really helps. And if you have any comments, questions, or criticisms, then please leave them in the comments below, along with any suggestions for future videos, any questions you want answered. In the description below, you'll also find the link to the blog post with all the sources for this video, which, if you're interested, I would really recommend going and having a look into, because I can't put everything into a 10-15 minute video. Until next time though, I've been Thomas, 
you've been watching Inversion Science, and I'll see you in the next video.